Join us as we take a break from working on the cars for another pedal box road trip. Welcome back to another episode of Pedalbox on the west coast of America, which is quickly becoming a kind of home from home for us. And we're here with Van, who you might remember from when we built the Wrathfinder with myself, John, and Yolanda smashing out the windows. And that was really good. Like, what happened to the Wrathfinder? Well, we flew out, like, as it was meant to be racing. So it was a lot of uh, miscommunications on certain things. <laughs> uh, the event was a trailer race, and we showed up race day, and we didn't have a trailer. Uh, the trailer that we had was not uh, eligible for the event. So cool. we had to just wait, wait, wait. And then COVID happened. And then the Wrathfinder was lost in the sea of metals. So yeah, so there's a big scrapyard over here. Well, it's a scrapyard. It's a graveyard of lots of different cars, mostly Hondas, to be fair. It's mostly, mostly Civics, Hondas. mostly Accords. There's a bunch of RVs, but there is like an early RX-7 in there, which used to have a rotary in it. And, and now obviously it doesn't. But yeah, like that's a bit sad to see all beaten down over there. <laughs> But there's loads of stuff there, as I say, mostly Hondas, because typically what they end up doing here in a couple of the big races, one is a demolition derby and the trailer race, obviously, depending yes. on what's happening. So there is a trailer race happening today and some demo, demo derby, but there is also a skid race, wherein you remove the rear wheels, you need a front wheel drive car. I'm gonna point this out because, you know, people have made mistakes like that before. Um, front wheel drive car, and you put skid plates welded onto the wheels on the back and then race. Simple as that. But what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we like to have our fun around here. Uh, so Night of Destruction is uh, Robert Rice's uh, child, it's his baby. Uh, and every, every event he tries to do something creative and fun. Uh, we've had a, a car towing a car race. So the front car does all the power, the rear car has all the braking. We've had uh, RVs, uh, figure eight destruction. We, tonight we have a special treat. For Easter, we're doing a trailer race destruction. So you have cars yeah. towing a boat or a trailer of some sorts, crashing into each other, making a huge mess. Yeah, and there's loads of, I mean, most of them have actually gone around. They're doing like this sort of um, fan thing around at the front. There's an, is, is it actually a NASCAR event on here today? Yes. Or like it is a NASCAR event. It's not obviously the big NASCAR event, but it is a NASCAR sanctioned um, oval race here as well. Yes, it is um, the stock car. It's uh, the, uh, they call it like the future racers, heroes, uh, legends of tomorrow, uh, the amateur circuit, if you will. But these guys throw down, so it's very fun to watch. So yeah, so that's on. And then in amongst all of that, or probably after it, realistically, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> once, once the pros have <laughs> left the site, then they put on all of the stupid stuff. And yeah, there's, there's trailers just kicking around with boats on all over here. Behind this fence, there's just loads more boats ready and there's lots of spares. So yeah, unfortunately, the Wrathfinder kind of got uh, screwed over because the trailer wasn't legit. Um, so it had to go somewhere else. It was, uh, it, for those wondering what legit actually means, it was a jet ski duct taped to a skateboard. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. That's, okay, that's amazing. Our original trailer got uh, got re uh, reassigned to someone else. So last minute, we were trying to like. Put <laughs> That's okay, the fact that you tried to enter with that is absolutely incredible. It was, yeah, we tried. <laughs> Good old college try. Right, okay, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, uh, so it's a real pity I, no, I hadn't seen that. <laughs> that would have been incredible. But yeah, so that's what we're here for today. And we're going to bring you some video from a couple of the races later on this afternoon. As I say, mostly it is Accords and things that's kicking around and, there's, and a bunch of Civics. Uh, you used to race for Jan's Towing, who are in yes. here tonight. They're in the trailer race. They've got um, an Easter basket themed boat trailer on the back. And we've been adding this massive handle and they've got all sorts of giant suites in the top of it. Um, and also uh, Pick Apart is uh, racing as well, who you were going to be racing with this time. Yes. So we'll see them out on track and hopefully try and give you a little bit of commentary. I mean, what useful commentary there is of, yep, he hit him. Uh-huh. And he hit him again. I mean. That's almost like things, one at times. Things are fine, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, he's out now. The junkyard at the track is where everything gets stored between races. This includes vehicles from the RV races, the boats from the trailer races, as well as the trailers, and any other vehicles either waiting to be used as a donor or things that have just been left behind. 
While some of the vehicles like this wagon have clearly taken a beating or two, this caddy looks in surprisingly good condition and almost doesn't look ready for the junkyard or even the demolition derby. So this is that really sorry looking RX-7 and at one point apparently this was used in a train race where that car in the front is a Civic and that is the power and steering for the train, that one's in the front. You have this one in the middle and this is a dead car, this has absolutely nothing to do with the race other than being in the way of the car at the back which does all of the braking for the whole shebang. And as you can see at the front, this is basically a big pivot and you just chain this onto the back of whatever car is in front. And then in the back of here, there's another one that you attach onto the other car. But I think this was actually last used in a uh, regular, like two car, <laughs> regular two car race where this was the brakes. But in the past, apparently this has been the meat in the sandwich of a, of a train race, which honestly, an RX-7 in a demolition race, you never really, expect it i don't think anybody i think there's probably a lot of people watching this right now weeping slightly that an original rx7 is is kind of dying this badly and this is what van should have been driving today it is a 1990 honda civic probably with a 1.6 1.8 liter engine it wouldn't be a two liter but it has two critical flaws doesn't matter if it has that VTEC. However, <laughs> it does have VTEC. VTEC be damned. And some cool stick on vents. So the, the gills. One if I pull that off, the whole wing is going to pull off the car. <laughs> I'm going to leave that right alone. Only the this best from quick. AutoZone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so the two big concerns here is that one, we don't have a battery. And two, we also don't have a key. And it's not pre hot wired, so there's no way of making that happen right yeah. now. Yeah. And there are batteries all around us like the rvs are full of batteries the cars over there are full of batteries the cars over there are full of batteries including the rx7 and yet none of them will fit the terminals on this car so we're kind of boned it's all right though big lemons out of lemonade or yeah. what's the expression <laughs> when life gives you lemons <laughs> say screw it <laughs> screw the lemons and bail so we're just gonna have a good time at the races regardless <laughs> Yeah, we're going to sit around, we're going to watch some racing and have a good time because you don't actually need to drive to have fun here. You just come down and watch. Like, it is a good night. Yeah, why not? Stuff gets a crash, we get to witness a crash. That's, that's what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> So freshly defeated by batteries, we went back to help prep our adoptive truck for the trailer race. And nothing is complete without stickers. I don't expect this little tyke's car to last all that long, but at least it'll be on brand. And if you want some pedal box stickers of your own or any other merch to help support the channel, go to shop.pedalbox.show, or if you'd prefer, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow and support our builds in the UK from as little as a dollar a month. The first race up was the ARCA Maynard series. Now, this is a weekly amateur NASCAR championship with points and cash up for grabs for each race. I think the winner of this race got about $5,000. Throughout the race, the 88 car was spitting fire out of the right hand exhaust. Didn't seem to be doing it out of the left hand one on the other side of the track, but every time it was on the overrun, it would start blowing out fire. No other cars were doing this, so maybe it wouldn't have been surprising if everybody else was doing it, but it was just number 88. Despite this, it seemed to be pretty plain sailing for number 88, whereas number 54 looks to have popped a tyre or caught something underneath the flooring, because it was making a big spark trail all the way around turn 1 and 2. Perhaps they were just getting ready for the skid plate race later on. After a restart, the racing got underway again and continued pretty much without incident all the way up to the chequered flag. Unfortunately, I can't remember exactly who won this race, but I think it was number six. I could be wrong though. I should probably look that up.
The Tucker Tire Enduro race was 30 minutes with 19 cars starting and everything got off to a pretty good start. The start finish line was right out on the oval in front of the grandstand that the ARCA cars had just been racing on, with the majority of the track sitting on the infield in something of a kidney shape. This race, save for the amateur NASCAR that preceded it, had some of the best wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing of the night, as you might expect given the type of racing that was going to follow it. Two cars, 7 and 16, battled it out lap after lap and really made for some entertaining racing up near the front of the field, or at least what I think was the front of the field. They certainly seemed to be doing the best and lapping the majority of people. They weren't the only good battles though, with more and more in the rest of the field. 95 and 35 scrapped away lap after lap as well, with eventually 95 sliding out over the start finish line into turn one and getting hit by another car which actually pushed it back into the race. Unfortunately, the other car didn't fare so well and pulled up by the barrier in a lot of steam and smoke. Most of the same cars went out into the Tucker Tire figure 8, at least those who survived the Enduro did. Everything started pretty well with the field headed around the same course, save for not using the hairpin on the far side of the track and instead crossing over going the opposite way around turn 3 and 4 and back towards turn 1. As you might expect, everything was going pretty well whilst the field was bunched up together. But as the field started to stretch out and the front runners got further and further away, it started to get a little bit more interesting at the crossover. Some closer and closer calls lap after lap as the field spread out had people dashing for smaller and smaller gaps to get across without having to slow down and being blocked up by the front runners as they came through the crossover. Eventually, this white prelude, the number 42 car, decided that the better part of Valor was not getting T-boned in the middle of a race and backed off. Unfortunately, that meant the car they'd been chasing for quite a few laps now got through ahead of them and they had to make up all that ground all over again. I'm just going to say it, for all skid plate racing looks extremely slow and this actually looks like it's been slowed down for dramatic effect, skid plate racing might be my new favourite racing type of all time. It's all the sideways of drifting but slower and perhaps a little bit easier to control, although it's probably really easy to get confident after a couple of corners, overcook it and just loop out into either the middle of the course or right out into a barrier. As lots of people have said before, going fast in slow cars can be really, really good fun. All of these cars are fairly humdrum, four-pot, front-wheel drive vehicles just with steel plates on the rear instead of tyres around their wheels. 
It definitely looks spectacular and it absolutely seems to be a hoot to take part in. Next time we're over here, I'm definitely going to see if we can try and take part in one of these races because I think this is the best type of racing I could possibly be involved with. Finally, the last race of the evening, and it's with good reason that it's the last one and that these races have been getting slightly more destructive as they've gone on. As the track is being littered with some caravans and some boats to add some extra obstacles onto the main straight, there's really not a lot more to say about it. It's just absolute carnage. Destruction of the highest calibre watching pickup trucks with massive steel grills plow through the side of very thin plywood vehicles. I was genuinely surprised how long our little tyke's car held onto the back of the trailer but it's not entirely shocking that it came off reasonably soon into the race. But then so did many people's boats. They came off and added extra debris to the track. And unsurprisingly, everybody ended up aiming for the caravans and boats just to try and cause a bit more damage and spread a little bit more debris all across the track. I hope you've enjoyed our trip to Irwindale this episode and hopefully if you like it, like the video, leave a comment, let us know what you think and what would you use in a skid plate race. If you'd like to support the channel you can go to shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy our merch, our stickers and more and if you'd like to support us directly you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.